Hello everyone, today we're going to be teaching you how to play any mid-range deck in Hearthstone. Mid-range decks are decks you want to win in the mid-game, so not early like aggro decks and not late like control decks. It's that nice in-between with constant threats on the board and constant minions that will help you win the game. We're going to be going over a few decks, so let's get started right now. So the key to mid-range decks is you're not trying to go super fast at the beginning like an aggro deck. But you're also not trying to control the board as much as a control deck. It's a good in-between. So as you can see right now, I'm mulligan for cards that just give me early game board presence like you usually would. I don't have anything to play on turn 1 besides just hero power as Demon Hunter. So he plays a 3-2 on turn 1. That tells me it's an aggro deck. I got two options here. I can play Watch Post or I can play Chaos Strike. I'm thinking two things right now. This Shaman looks like an aggressive deck because he's playing a 1 mana 3-2. And second, if I play Far Watch Post, he just gets the easy trade in the 3-2. I'm going to play Chaos Strike. It draws me a card. I get the eye beam in my hand, which is good. Plus, he's overloaded for one. He does have the coin, so he can play a two cost card. I have Fury rank one to remove that if I need to. Again, you're not as aggressive as the aggro deck. That early board presence is not as necessary. The problem with mid range decks, though, is that they usually do lose to aggro decks. So we're gonna play out of our minds today, so we will win. And by play out of our minds, I mean we're gonna use these cards. If you're following the Forge and the Baron's meta right now, you're gonna notice this isn't the usual mid-range Demon Hunter, it's playing Watch Post. It's because I prefer playing the Watch Post version because I think it gives you more of a chance against an early aggro decks. I have a few options. I can play Kazakus, which wouldn't really help. It'd give me a 3-3, sure, but then it wouldn't protect the far watch post. If this is an aggro deck, I want him to have no chance of drawing cards you can play. So I want to keep this far watch post alive. So he plays two minions here. I can't take out both of them reliably unless I get lucky with a wand maker, and I'm not going to risk that on a wand maker. Right now, I'm not in a losing position enough that I need to take a risk, so I can just play anything I want. There's a lot of options here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the lifesteal cards and just attack. Why am I going to attack into this? Well, obviously, I don't want the 3-4 attacking into the 2-3. I want him to attack the 3-2 into the 2-3. Because if this is an aggro deck, which I'm still assuming it is, I want him to do the worst trades he can. Because I will win later. And then he plays the land side, which is fine. Now here is the downside of my last play about playing the Aldarachi Warblades. I want this to gain me health. That's the reason why they put them in the deck. Because if you're against an aggro deck, you need to gain health. But I'm going to be using it to only gain is a small amount of health compared to last time. So I could pick the 1 cost here. My plan is to hero power this away so I gain 3 health. The 5 cost golem will give me more value than the 1 cost golem right now. We're about even on the board. There's a good chance I don't need the poisonous right now. Pont's not as big of a deal because his board's not that big. And I'm going to actually have the board presence after this. So I'll pick life seal. And I got battle cry give your other minions plus 2 plus 2. It's not good because I don't have any other minions. So of course we pick the control one. The hero power, we pass. So I have a 3-3 on the board, and now we're heading into the mid game, which is where mid-range decks should excel at. Skull of Godon, I got really lucky and put that on the left side of my hand when I mulliganed it, so I can play that next turn if I want to. Alternatively, I can try to take this out, because I don't want the 3-4 against the 3-3. Three, three. That'd give him a lot of war control. I can play Guidance. I see he drew two cards, which gives them an overload of one. You can also hover over the enemy crystals just to see if they're overloaded. So I can just plop out the Skull of Godon, and that wouldn't be that bad right now. I can also try to play Illidari Studies to see what that gives me. So I think I'm actually going to Illidari Studies. Unfortunately, I didn't get a card I really wanted, but that's okay, because I'm just going to play Star Student Stalina. So now that I see three of the cards in his hand, I can safely assume this is not an aggro deck anymore because none of these are aggro cards. <laughs> I'm going to say Hex, actually. I'm going to go face here. I don't need to trade into that in Hero Power. I'm going to let him do it. I know I'm going to get rid of a 4-3 instead of the 3-3, or you might 3-3 value trade. I'm okay with that because I need to start pushing the damage in the mid game. It's important to know how you're going to win in these decks. So how I'm going to win is hopefully Skull of Godon is going to draw me these cards, and that's going to hopefully deal a lot of damage to the face. I need to start getting him low to get ready for that. Just another tip interaction right here since greater golem has life sealed the battle cry that deals three damage to any minions will life steal so he plays the shrine portal and i know he has landslide and lightning bolt in his hand because i saw it with this card star student stalina there's the landslide and he is overloaded so he does it twice goes face here of course you go face here this is why we have greater golem so I can go 3-3, three and three. it's not going to be the best trades, but if I get lucky with Demon Companion, I can take it out. But, here's the thing, I actually want to play Demon Companion first, because if I get this card, I can go trade, and I can attack, and I can hero power, or I can play more Sean Watch Post, because 
It doesn't matter if this thing's alive or dead because this can't even attack in the first place. Two damage to the face won't hurt me because I got a life seal. Plus, I have a card called Korgal Battle Scar, which for every watch post that I play, it'll summon a 5-5. And that's one of the ways I will win, especially since he's used two landslides already. If it's a control deck, I should win with all my just presence. And now that I see the Doom Hammer, I know exactly what deck he's playing. He's playing a weapon deck, which means he's going to buff his weapon a lot, and then he's going to deal with attack, so it's almost like a combo deck. So I need to start dealing damage to the face. So I'm going to draw cards first, of course. Blade Lady, that's amazing. Another watch post. And there's that big card, Korgal Battle Scar. So we're going to just do that, attack the face. So here's the problem. Now I'm wishing I picked Taunt because he has the Doom Hammer. So I assumed wrong that he was playing aggro. Whoops, it's too late for regrets, I guess. I gotta shift my strategy. Mid-range decks are approaching the late mid-game, so almost towards the end game. I need to start pushing damage to the face. He's playing a Spell Burst card, which will probably be Rockbiter Weapon, I'm assuming. He's gonna Rockbiter his face for 5, so Rockbiter, he'll have 8 attack, and he'll deal 16 to the face. That's why it's very important I start taking out. Or he's gonna play Dunk Tank, and he attacks into it. If I was this shaman, I don't know if I'd attack him, but it's not me, it's him, so. Aldrachi Warblades. I'm gonna play Relentless Pursuit this turn. Why am I playing Relentless Pursuit? It's because next turn the Fury will activate and it'll rank. It'll go plus. I think it's plus four, and I'll lifesteal again for almost full. That's why Aldrachi Warblades helps against decks with combos too, especially Weapon Shaman. Of course, you're trading the rush into the 2-3. It's the only minion that can attack. And I want to deal damage to the face. The combo, the big finisher for this mid-range deck is that I'm going to deal lots of damage to the face with my weapons. And I'm going to have a few cards in my deck which will burst for a lot of damage. If I don't win with those, I'm not going to win the game. Fortunately for me, I might not even need to get there in the first place. That's what I was afraid of last turn. The Rock Rider weapon gave him plus 3 attack. So, what this game is showing you is you have to... Consider what your opponent is playing, especially in a mid-range deck, and know how you're going to win that. He plays Hex, that's okay. I wouldn't say it's a one game yet. I'm also going to play Fury this turn, just because I need to deal damage. And I'm going to attack the face, because of course there's no reason to do 7 damage with 2 health minion. But, if let's say that was a bigger minion. Let's say that was maybe like a... Uh, let's say that was like a 5-5. Five, five. I am scared that he can deal 5 to the face, and then he can deal 18 with his hero. But more importantly, I need to start dealing damage to the face right now. Because if you look at my hand, I'm running out of steam, I'm running out of cards. I do have Skull of Godon in my deck, that could save me. But more importantly, I just need to start winning, because it's turn 10. It's the end game, practically. You need to start dealing damage to the face. And there's a second dunk tank. And he can't win. And that's a win for the mid-range deck, him the well played. Alright, so we are against a rogue in our first game. You want a mulligan for low-cost cards that give you lots of tempo. So this isn't the worst hand I could have gotten. It's not the best hand I could have gotten. Ooh, maybe it is the best hand I could have gotten. Never mind. We're gonna play Acid Storm of Poise. Yeah, sure, he doesn't have a minion. That's still a 2-5 with Wind Fury. So if I can somehow get rid of Kindling Elemental, I can whack a null, and that'll deal 6 damage next turn. Alternatively, I could just go for the 50-50 with that whack a null hammer. I will still say this till the day I die. I do not know any rogue secrets. I'm still gonna play Whack and Old Hammer. I'm gonna attack face. It's okay that it didn't hit this one. And then we're gonna go attack, attack. Okay, here's our second play. I know Rogue is notorious for not having any healing, so I'm just actually gonna do this. Attack the face first, hopefully hits that. Nice. One, two, three. And I see his nine health left. Here I got two options. I'm actually gonna play Menacing Nimbus first. Should I have played Menacing Nimbus before every other card? Yes, I should have. You should have drawn first. Don't follow me, kids. And Shenanigans. Oh, wait. Shenanigans is a card? Oh, dear. Okay, well, I got a banana now. Learn your secrets. Don't be like me. Rogue shouldn't have any healing. I have six damage in my hand, plus the four damage from Fire Elemental. My board is also super big right now, so it's very unlikely he can deal with any of this. I have six damage on the board, and actually, I win next turn. Knowing your matchups helps you win. Yes, I am playing a mid-range deck. I'm supposed to win in the middle of the game, but I had a good opening, and... I knew my match, so I got the quick and easy win on the first game. So right now, this is against a mage. So I see here, I have a three mana card, but this card, I do not want to play on three. I want to mulligan it, because it's not going to give me enough value on three. I want to play it in the late game. 
Gaia Worm and the Serpent Shine Portal is way better in the early game. If you're playing against a mage right now in this meta, it's certainly going to be a spell mage. So I need to just deal damage to the face before they burst me down. That's what I'm thinking. Yes, I have been saying this is a mid-range deck and it is a mid-range deck. It's Elemental Shaman. But for mid-range decks, you're going to need to start pushing damage to the face, especially for the control decks. Because if you're playing a mid-range deck and you're against a control deck, you need to start dealing damage to the face. I did a misplay there. I should have played this in the middle so I don't get combustioned. And if I get combustioned, I will be very sad. I played Arcane Intellect, which is amazing for me. If this is Spell Mage, why should you play Watch Post? Well, one, he has a card called Font of Power. Whoa, look at that. What a hard read. That gives him minions. That's why you want to play Watch Post. Secondly, when you play a Watch Post, there's a card called Korgol Battle Scar. Ooh, great drop. That when you play a watch post, you get five fives. I think I've mentioned this and I'm going to mention this later. So, so Ruined Orb on that tells me he doesn't have a good minion to play this turn and probably won't have a good minion to play next turn. Because if he did, he should have taken out the watch post. Or he's also scared that that one damage is too much. Sorry, I have to pause there. I'm wondering why he did that. So I don't know why he played these two minions into it. That's five to the face. If I was playing against not a mage, I would actually play Earth Revenant and trade trade. But since I'm against a mage, I know Flame Strike is coming. So I'm going to go face here. Attack, attack. And actually what I'll do, since this only deals damage to frozen enemies, I'll save two attack just in case Lab Partner does something to me. I have three and six damage with the serpent shine portal and fire on multiple deal four so i have nine in my hand and i also have weapons in my deck which can also help mid-range decks again want to deal damage consistently over time with multiple threats and you can see i have a lot of consistent damage but it's not insane damage at the beginning it's a consistent flow of damage that's what you're looking for ruined orb on that that's good it, it tells me he doesn't have flame strike yet mage shouldn't be able to heal because that's just a mage thing so i'm gonna deal all the damage to the face and then both of my portals why would i play both of my portals you ask yourself because mage will have a card called counter spell which if i don't play around it may give him a chance to counter my serpent shrine portal sure i do put myself behind lethal for one turn i guess if you want to think of it that way hey there's the coin is it gonna be flame strike turn Oh, look at that. Am I scared enough that this person will deal 28 damage in one turn? No, I'm not. I'm going to play Fireheart just so we, I can see if I win this turn. I don't, but I get Molten Blast, and that will win. How did I win this game? It was consistent damage over time, like a mid-range deck should do. I know this is a mage, so I want to deal that consistent damage early, because I don't want to get Flame Strike. I'm aware he has Flame Strike, so I'm just going to be careful about that. He plays his attacking... If this game went on for maybe five more turns, no, let's not even five more turns, three more turns, I guarantee you I will lose because I don't have enough presence to keep up with the mage burst. But since I put up that constant pressure over time, again, I'm going to keep saying that I get the win. Thanks for watching. If you've learned something from this video, why not give it a thumbs up and subscribe because I got a lot more guides for you if you want to learn Hearthstone. If this did help you, why not comment below so I know I'm doing something right. And if it didn't help you, tell me why so I can make a better experience for your Hearthstone learning. I got a lot more videos and guides coming up about Hearthstone, so why not subscribe while you're at it? I think I've said that twice. Whoops. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time. See ya.